if if it wasn't a family plan, well, I mean to say if it is a family plan instead of a self plan, then those limits change, right? So I can go back on over, I can go into here and say, did you, what if I'm gonna jump into this one and say that now it's a family plan too. If I'm not gonna change the, the marital status and whatnot right now, but just to give a general idea, if I jump on over, now it's at the 6,750. If I look at my form for the calculation, here we have the, the 6,750 and they put in $1,000. We have the total coverage of the 7,750 that we could deduct, but the employer already took 1,000 of it reflected in W-2 income, reducing it by 1,000 in box one, which means that we can still contribute the 6,750. So if your employer, if it's going through your employer and they don't max it out, but they're putting money into it based on withholdings of your paycheck, then this is another area where you might be able to do last minute tax planning, which like the IRA is only gonna be something that's beneficial if they have the money to put money into this tax planning. And this is, this is again, where I think it's a little bit uh, kind of, you know, uh, these IRAs in here, you have the same kind of situations with the 401k. They actually help wealthy people, even though they're trying to incentivize people to, to do kind of the right thing. The argument is they're nudging people to put money away for health care and retirement. But in practice, what's happening is, you, is you're going to increase all of the amounts that you can put into these funds, which only benefit the people that have the money <laughs> to put this into the funds. So this, this one's a little bit tricky uh, because notice when you're talking about like a, a 401k plan, then if, if, if you have enough money to put money into the 401k plan, you're just gonna maximize that as you put money out, take money out of your account. And if you can still put money into an IRA, then, you, then a well-off person might still have the money to put to max out the IRA or like a SEP in that case. When you're talking about a high deductible health insurance, it's kind of a weird thing because usually you would think that th that that if you were a, a well-off individual, then you might not have the high deductible uh, health plan, and 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 therefore you don't have, and so you might be work. So so that's why this one's a little bit tricky, right? Because because you might have the cash flow to put the money in or do the last-minute cash planning, but you probably may be working with people that don't have the cash flow and therefore have to kind of manage it you know through the year because at the year end you can imagine situations where you have the cash flow that you could put into this if you had the money and you could put money into possibly an ira uh, if you had the money to help you out with your taxes but again you'll you'll need the cash flow to do that and so on okay so that's the general idea so the general idea with these these plans, if you if 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 you qualify for the plan, you have the high deductible health insurance plan and so on. Then the question is, is it something that can be set up through your work, possibly making it easier to take the deductions by having them withheld from your paycheck? It being easier to calculate because the employer will take care of the tax consequences in essence by reducing the income in box one of the W-2, which makes it at least easier to report on that side. However, if the employer doesn't do that or they don't maximize their contribution, then you might be able to set up your own health savings account, which you would think would be you know, fairly easy to do by going to your financial institution like a bank and then setting it up that way if you qualify for it. When you put the money in, you get the tax benefit either by reducing line one on the W-2, or if it's not done through the employer by the adjustment to income, which kind of has the same impact on the adjusted gross income is the general idea. And that is that. And then when the account grows, then hopefully that'll be a tax-free thing as it earns interest. And if it wasn't under the umbrella of a savings account, you'd have to pay taxes as it grows. And then when you take the money out, Hopefully you spend it on items that are that are qualified, in which case you might not have to include it in income, but that's where you have to be very careful to make sure that you're spending it on the proper things. Otherwise, it might be 
something you have to include in income, which also could be subject to then the tax and the penalties and so on. And we looked at that a little bit when we looked at the income side of things, and that's on the schedule one. And I think it's on, it's under other income from form uh, 8889. So you could see the, the, the calculation on form 8889, where you have the health savings account part one, it's just, is the HSA contributions. So we're talking about the deductible side, part two, HSA distributions. If you file in a joint, both returns, you and your spouse each have separate HSAs, complete a separate part two for uh, each spouse. And I won't go into that in detail right now, but just note, and then part three, income and additional tax for failure to maintain uh, the HDHP high deductible uh, health uh, plan coverage. So I won't go into the, to the, to the details on the two individuals, but this is another area where, remember when two people are, are separate, they're two separate entities, but then they come together in marriage and heart and soul becomes one as well as the taxable entity is now one. But then you've got all these weird things that happen where, where, you know, they still have tax consequences tied to a single social security number and, and, and that kind of thing, which could come into play uh, at times as well. And also if they're married, you have to be careful of the married filing separate situation because that often complicates the, the deductibility of things as well.